Hi, my name is Derek Garcia with LearnSBOM.com, and this is the last part of a three-part series covering Anchor Sift and Gripe tools. I've covered how to use each of these tools independently in the previous parts, so if you're interested in learning more about them, be sure to check them out. However, today I'll be going over the GitHub actions that pair with each of the tools and how they work together. Before I start, I've put all the example workflow files I'll be showing today in a repo that I've linked below, so feel free to follow along or use them in your own workflows. I've set up a modified repo with a vulnerable Python project to demonstrate. First, we need to create the workflows directory, which should be familiar if you've seen any of the other demos we've done with GitHub Actions. All the GitHub Action files need to be placed under .github slash workflows, otherwise they won't run. So doing that now. Then you can name your action file whatever you'd like. So in my case, just sift.yaml. Starting with sift, I've copied over my entire example workflow file and I'll go over it part by part and then in the end I'll run the entire thing. All right I've commented everything out and to start we'll just use the default usage. We'll need to check out the branch and then sift will scan the repo. I'll detail more about it later but the sift github repo action will generate artifacts each time the action is run so you'll have a final SBOM report somewhere. After committing the changes we'll see the output All right, there we go. And we can see all the SIFT information here. Now, if I go back up to my summary, I can see I now have an artifact with my SPDX JSON by default SBOM available. Next, we can specify a dedicated path we want to generate from. This is useful if you just want to scan the source code or leave out miscellaneous files like a readme file. In this case, I'm just scanning the current directory, which is a little redundant, but I'll commit and we can see the results. There we go. And we can see once again that we have our artifact generated. Next is generation for an external image. This time, instead of a path, we pass in an image that will be pulled and scanned. This might be useful if you're using that image with your project and you just want to make sure that it doesn't have any issues that will affect your work. After running, we'll see a similar output to the path argument. There we go. Once again, we'll have our artifact right here. Next, there are a few ways to name the resulting SBOM artifact. The first step shows the default convention, which is repo name dash job dash step ID or number. We can also give a step ID, which will be used instead of the step number. Lastly, we can just rename the artifact entirely, the artifact name field. Just be careful to include the file extension with the name because it won't be included as a default. In this example, I've just left it off. and we can see the results. We have our default name, our one we use with the ID, and lastly, the artifact we named outright. And again, no, this one doesn't have that file extension. Lastly, we can define the SBOM format with the format field. By default, SPDX JSON SBOMs are used, but SIFT, Cyclone DX, and SPDX standards in either JSON or XML form are supported. In this case, I'm defining the file extension with the artifact so when I open I'll know what file I have. All right and we can see we have our two JSON files in their respective formats. And that's it for the basics for SIP. All of these options can be used with each other. I've just separated them out for sake of demonstration. I've uncommented everything to show you how the entire file works but it mostly runs the same. All right, and you can see all the formats succeeded and we can scroll down and see all of our resulting artifacts we generated. Next up is gripe. Like the command line counterparts, it shares a very similar syntax with sift. I've already set up my workflows file 
Gripe works by scanning whatever argument is given and fails to build if it doesn't meet the scan criteria. Just be warned, especially when initially setting up Gripe into your workflow, that it will also fail if the arguments are bad or for some other reason. So be sure to check the output to make sure that the scan failed because it didn't meet the criteria and not that there was an error. I'll be going through the first three examples pretty quick since they're identical to the SIFT ones, just with the GitHub Actions swapped out. Regardless, the basic example can scan the current directory like SIFT, so I'll just run it quickly. Again, we can see the build failed because this is a vulnerable Python repository. So checking the output, we can see we failed the minimum security level and as a result, failed the entire build. Next is the path, which allows you to specify what you want Gripe to scan. So again, if you just want to send a target source directory folder instead of the entire project. And once again, we can see the build failed. Unlike SIFT, there isn't a nice artifact with the report, but I'll show you a workaround for that later. Next is the external image. Again, exactly like SIFT, we just pass in the target image with the image argument. This time, since the image was secure, the build succeeded. Next, we can finally deviate from the SIFT convention. The gripe action can also scan SBOMS directly. So if you have a collection somewhere, say generated from another command line tool, you're able to scan them. This can be done using the SBOM argument, which in my case, I have all my SBOMS in SBOMS directory, and I've given the location of each of them. Gripe can parse SIFT, SBDX, and Cyclone DX SBOMS. I've mainly added some SBOMS generated using SIFT from another vulnerable project as an example. All of these will fail, which is why I've got the if always, so the action won't stop running. And we can see the build has failed. Lastly, we configure the failure options. In this case, I'm just scanning another SBOM file again, but this can be done with any of the previous scanning methods. With the severity cutoff field, we can set what severity of the vulnerability needs to occur before the scan fails, allowing you to set a more strict or lax policy. By default, it's set to media. With the fail build field, we can tell Gripe whether to fail the build or not if the scan fails. This is useful when testing workflows or there's other actions that need to be run. We'll see that a warning will occur, but the build will still succeed. All right, again, the build succeeded, but as you saw there, we do have a warning that it failed the minimum security level. And that's it for Gripe. I'll quickly run the entire file and view the results. All right, and we can see similar results to each one individually. Scrolling down, we can see all the reasons why the SBOMs failed. To wrap up the GitHub Actions, I've put together a simple example workflow file that uses both SIFT and Gripe to generate an SBOM and use it to scan for vulnerabilities. The first step uses SIFT to create a SIFT SBOM and exports it as an artifact. I also output the SIFT as SIFT-SBOM.JSON to print in the next step. In the scan output step, I use gripe to scan the sif-sbom.json file by passing it to the sbom field. We'll see this will fail the build when I run it, but using the if always in the next step, I'll print the gripe report regardless. Gripe supports a serif and json report, but in this case I'm using the default serif output. Now I'll run it and we can view the result. And because it's the same vulnerable project, we can see the build failed. Going through each step, we check out the branch. We create our SBOM. See all the information about that here. We output it to a artifact right here. In our report, we just print out the SBOM so we can see all the information about the packages right there in the GitHub action. We scan the SBOM we just generated and we can see it failed 
our requirements. But still, even though it failed, it can print the report and see what exactly failed. With that, this concludes this three-part series on Anchor Tools. Sift and Gripe are already robust tools for SBOM generation and vulnerability detection, but become infinitely more powerful when used via their GitHub actions. The ability to set up these tools to operate in an autonomous manner ensures that your project will always have accurate SBOMs and secure dependencies. As an attestment to their effectiveness, many other SBOM tools use Sift and Gripe, including Microsoft Solace and Docker CLI, as the core of their SBOM generation. I highly recommend these tools and encourage their use in any software development environment. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to reach out to us at learnasbomb.com. Thank you for checking out this video. If you really liked it, be sure to check out our other videos right here, and then you can also subscribe right up top here. And again, thank you. Bye-bye.